Namaskar, I'm Ashok Vyaz, and it's a great honor and pleasure to be interacting with someone who has uh, dedicated uh, his uh, life, his creativity, his energy in empowering not only himself but uh, many Indian Americans in a very unique and special way. Uh, he has lived in a way which has brought him uh, in close contact with uh, important presidents, governors, entrepreneurs, and whatnot. Uh, he has worked closely with uh, so many organizations that if you start naming all of them, uh, it might take quite a while. But I would like to mention one important key organization that he founded about 30 years ago. And uh, he is chairman and executive board and CEO of Indian American International Chamber of Commerce. Uh, his name is uh, Krishna Murthy Vyas Kumar. But everybody knows him as uh, K.V. Kumar. And Kumar Sahib's one specialty I would mention and then I have him uh, directly talk to you and that is he doesn't believe in getting stuck with what he himself starts, um, initiates and then gives um, the baton to others and move on. Uh, he believes in mentoring and helping people succeed in their lives and we are so delighted that we have succeeded in having him to our studio today, K.V. Kumar Sahib. Namaskar. Namaskar Ji. Kumar Sahib, coming from Washington DC to New York, let us just talk about the difference between these two uh, cities, so to say. Do you see there is some difference in the energy? And if I may add, with the presence of uh, President Trump from New York to Washington, what is the difference? He brought energy from New York to Washington. <laughs> No, both cities are vibrant cities, and I, you know, I first uh, landed up in uh, New York City in 1968, 52 years back, and I have a lot of respect for New York, and I am happy to be in New York. It's a high energy city, and a lot of things happens in this city that nowhere else in the world you can find that kind of combination. We have the greatest organizations in this country, which are located in this city the stock market, United Nations, and all the diplomatic missions, and so on and so forth. Kumar Zab, let me uh, try to sort of learn about your life and help uh, our viewers appreciate what all you have been through. Uh, there are some formulative years, or formative years, I must say. Uh, so if we go towards uh, the first 20 years of Kumar Zab, I believe you were in India, and what were the dreams at that time? Honestly, I was, I didn't have much of dream except that, uh, you know, to go to school and, uh, you know, to uh, do what I was supposed to do. I was interested in my friends, and we were always interested in doing things for others. And my first duty in, in, in India started with my grandfather. I took care of my grandfather and grandmother. I was the favorite son to them. And that's where my volunteer work started. Which um, part of India was that? And uh, allow me to add, I think this uh, volunteer work continued to be with you. And uh, there are so many NGOs that you have uh, closely worked with. Uh, and we'll come to that. But talk to me about how significant role uh, your selfless acts have played in your life. You know, I have done about 138,000 hours of volunteer work, which started with taking care of my elderly grandparents, my grandmother and grandfather. And, uh, and uh, I learned a lot from them. And my grandmother was near blind, and I helped her and we took care of her. And my grandfather was a Sanskrit and Telugu scholar he, you know, even Dr. Radhakrishnan worked very closely with him. Wow. And he was, he was a good teacher. And listening to him, going, he used to go and give discourses to local business people in Bengaluru. And I was the collection officer. And they used to give mashasan, which is monthly uh, donation to my grandfather, small amounts. And I used to go and collect them for my grandfather, and he used to give me a part of that for me. Wow. And uh, fr from that, I came to United States. I so, Kumar, yeah. you allow me to yeah. uh, sort of uh, pause here for a second. And typically, when we uh, refer to Sanskrit, 
we only think about the spiritual side of life or scriptures but what he just mentioned is quite interesting uh, he was addressing or connecting and engaging with entrepreneurs yes he was he was telling them what you need to do in life is nothing but what god has meant for you do that properly and you'll be successful so now going by this um, what is it that god has determined for you how you determine in your individual case where would you say your grandfather helped you your introspection helped you how and where to go and my parents my father was founder of bangalore chamber of commerce he was in the FIC, he was at fiki he was in the, in the executive committee of the fiki he was president of karnataka chamber of commerce at that time it was known as mysore chamber of commerce and he has done a lot of good work my father was a icon in his own way and uh, and he should be given the nobel prize for <laughs> connecting with us and india at that time and uh, you know but uh, having that such good grandparents and parents my life became a little bit different in addition to doing our children childhood things and all these things you know we do good and bad things as children and but i quickly learned that when i came to united states and uh, i first arrived in new york in 1968 and spent about 9 months here and okay, then so yeah. I, i again sort yeah. of uh, seek your forgiveness for interrupting but i just want our viewers to learn about your journey to america you Correct. didn't come directly to america you went to philippines so no, no 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 i i oh. came directly to united okay. states i spent few days in london i stayed with my father's friend uh, uh, in london and i came here directly and uh, my philippine journey was later on much later I see, on I see. yeah so um, since the reference of philippines came and uh, because prior to uh, the formal uh, on the camera session as we were discussing how we respond to the challenges thrown by life on us and sometimes they are in the form of uh, uh, unbearable tragedies and um, you ask questions um, as to why me why it happened etc so if um, you care to share uh, yeah, sure. how right i i had many tragedies in my life uh, we lost two daughters age 1 and 1/2 and 4 while i was in the philippines i went to philippines to set up monitoring and evaluation system at the asian development bank i was borrowed on loan from the world bank because i used to do similar job at the world bank and uh, when i went there you know unfortunately we lost two daughters there and then my wife uh, went through a major accident and she hasn't recovered even now and uh, fortunately she is feeling much better anyway she had an accident in 1990 and then i had an accident in 1992 i suffered from that for about 12 years oh man nearly 12 years and um, and uh, but you know it's it's i'm i don't i don't think i look back at it from the point of view of why me and all those things i think it happens for various reasons whatever the reasons were and i don't know the reasons okay so i honestly cannot respond to that but having gone through those difficulties i can tell you lord opens a opens a window when there is a problem and then you have to look at that and go through that one and that helped me when i recovered from my head injury for about 10 years it's a decade long recovery and when i recovered from the head injury i realized i was you know born to do something good for the nation and for our people and i'm continuing to do whatever little i can do in fact uh, when i met ratan tata after 11 or 12 years uh, and he said somebody told me you were dead i said not only james bond lives twice kv kumar lives twice too <laughs> 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 so i turned i turned i'm a turn around specialist and first of all i turned my own life around and i wanted to become a useful citizen i did not sue the coca cola company or the vice president who was driving the car when when we had the accident when i had the accident instead i turned around and i used that time to do something good 
So I'm talking to uh, KV Kumar Sahib and uh, he has led such an incredibly inspiring life that we are not only thankful to him for being candid and compassionate in sharing what he has been through and as he said he turned around not only his life there are many things but the the secret of being um with this kind of mental framework with this mindset which has resilience uh, which is ready to bounce back and which also sustains a sense of humor at the way you shared this um, episode of uh, interacting with ratan tata ji after 11 years so where would you say lies the secret is it your grandfather certain practices that you imbibe from your childhood days i don't know about that but uh, i look at it i look at life in a different frame of work you know it happens and uh, there's no reason for me to uh, look back through the you know rear window uh, and uh, worry about what happened why it happened to me it happens to a lot of people a lot of people suffer from a lot of you know calamities and it's a matter of degree how it how you take it and only thing is uh, i try to make sure that the same thing doesn't happen again to the extent that i can that's all we can do honestly going by your name and you come from india so i'm just kind of trying to see if there are certain practices which helps you in sustaining a sense of integrity um as an individual india is a country which has given us a lot of advantage um the land of mahatma gandhi and so many good people and so many good saints same so many good individuals looking back at it and how difficult times what difficult times they went through and all these things having read great many people number of people uh, and i mentioned just gandhi ji but so many people were involved in our independence our they sacrificed so much of their life what have we done what can we do and you know i am far away from india but i am very close to india yet and we try to do whatever little we can from this end and that's what when i first met with uh, prime minister modi ji i gave my card chairman of the chamber of commerce he said i hope your chamber will do better with is- on issues which are of importance to both united states and india i like that what modi ji said because he did not say what is good for india he said what is good for your country and my country and i thought that's excellent so what we are going to concentrate is on how to educate our people in the united states and also educate indians about what we are doing here to the extent that we can and so we are you know getting some eminent uh, experts from the universities and you know and industry to give us some helpful hand and we are going to start effective november 1st we are starting a monthly newsletter and we kind of push out the views which are of interest to both united states and india no no um uh, kevin kumar sahab um, i want to share with our viewers that uh, your ex expertise are in alliance building uh, business turnaround crisis management diversity liaison and government relations uh, ngo and non profit organization strategic planning and what you just shared uh, in terms of your interaction with prime minister narendra modi uh, also helped you f- dive deep into your expertise and see where creatively you can come up with something and i also want to add that sometimes uh, your education background helps you in having the kind of focus that is required uh, for the task in hand and you are you did masters in organization development and planning um, and you already had the background of economics uh, and then industrial and production engineering is also your forte now with all that background when we talk about turn around and we go um, to the case where you worked in the healthcare company at California and within 3 years uh, the whole thing was uh, much in a better shape talk to us about um, that experience and sure. what helped you 
You know, this is a healthcare company. Mainly, it was a dialysis company, and uh, it was going down. And the owner came, or one of the main owners came, and met with me in Washington. He said, I, prior to that, he, we have a hospital that we have built in India. I'm one of the small partners in that one in Bengaluru. And that was in foreclosure. I helped that hospital uh, away, took it away from foreclosure with the help of several friends. And because of that connection, he knew me. And he said, look, can you help me with this one? And that was a perfect timing. I had lost everything. And I was working for McCain, John McCain. I was the national director for business coalition. And, uh, and McCain lost the election. And then I was looking for a job. And I had maybe 10 or 12 offers. Even in, at the most difficult time in 19, uh, I mean 2008, you know how the economy, economy was very bad at the time. And, uh, and uh, I was able to get about 12 you know, uh, different opportunities. But this man, uh, I, I prefer to work with this uh, gentle particular individual because he was a medical doctor and also he knew me before. And I had never worked for somebody after my accident in a real position. And I thought this was, it would be good to work with someone who understands my difficulty. And then most of the problems with organizations that I have turned around happens to be human issue. It's, you know, people who do not want to get along with each other, create problems, manipulate one against the other. Mm. This was the condition when I took over. And within six months or so, I was able to control that one and, you know, concentrate on the operation side of it. Two centers were not working at all. And the rest, with the exception of one particular center, the rest of them had numerous problems. And over the period of next two years, we more, doubled the value of the company, more than double the value of the company. And then the owners sold it to Davita for a profit much higher than, probably about 300% more. Oh, wow. So now you mentioned couple of things and we were talking about healthcare so you uh, of course were uh, working with physicians in this case some of them of course in general as an expert in the field that uh, relates to organizational development it is not just human relationships so I, I I'm, I'm just kind of thinking loudly with you and you mentioned that it is human problem that is there about interpersonal communication lack of clarity correct and at the same time sometimes lack of cohesive vision of the organizational goals that also uh, prevents the organization from growing that that's what i meant you know honestly you you put it right better than i did actually you're right it is it is how you project your organization how you how people perceive your organization that is also an issue between who manages who works with them. And that's again an issue related to human relations. And it, it, it really, most of the, you know, I, I also served as an advisor in the grievance advisory panel of the World Bank. I have taken care of about 126 cases and I did not lose a single case. I'm not an attorney by profession. Amazing. So he's not an attorney by profession, but he's very clear in terms of what he's doing and uh, that is uh, probably the reason which uh, brought a lot of accolades, a lot of awards and I just want to mention a few of them which includes uh, Alice Island Award and uh, it is uh, one of the top awards that list includes uh, many big names including President Clinton I believe and uh, then uh, fortunately we are sitting right now at IT Gold and uh, Padma Shri Dr. Subhi Parikh also got uh, yes. Alice Island and he has some relationship with the uh, Indian American International Chamber of Commerce also. He, he doesn't have some relationship. He has a very prominent role to play. Dr. Sudhir Parikh is the chairman of Board of Trustees. It's a very important position and when we are fully equipped with that one, there's a much bigger role that Dr. Parikh is going to play. Dr. Parikh, of course, he's not only internationally known, well known, but also a very genuine human being. 
I have come to respect him over the years. And when I requested him to join our chamber as the chairman of board of trustees, he readily said, yes, KV, I will do it. And when people come and do it willingly, there's a big difference between what you want them to do or give them the full freedom to do what they want to do. Very, very good. And now, uh, you mentioned about your meeting with Prime Minister Narendra Modi and um, recently uh, we heard from IMF chief that the whole global economy is undergoing a sort of slowdown and the effect of uh, this uh, it would be visible more on India and Brazil in the one year period that uh, we are in. Uh, and now you connected with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision of taking India to five uh, trillion uh, dollar economy. Yes. How do you see both uh, working together? Okay, first on the world economy, world economy would have gone much, much, you know, uh, to a lower status. I agree with the IMF, but it is staying at this level because of the uh, you know, pro-business acts by President Trump. Okay, that's to begin with. Mm -hmm. And concerning Dr. I mean, Prime Minister Modiji's um, uh, $5 trillion ambition, it's not too far. He's, he's right on the dot. I think it's, he, he's not talking about uh, something that he cannot accomplish. India, for the next two decades at least, will be a pillar of the economic frontage. And added to that, we have such a young generation of Indian Americans in India with mega millions of younger generation. And what is happening in the other countries, including the United States, we are depleting our younger generation. We are increasing in the number of old age people. I am but an example of that one. I think you bring a sense of um, serenity as well as enthusiasm and insight uh, which inspires people who work with you to grow and you are known as a very, very um, effective mentor. So in your role uh, as a mentor for small entrepreneurs uh, working with small business houses, what, what did you learn from them? A lot. A lot. To give you an example, you know, I do a lot of things, but we don't normally publicize many of the things. I'll give one example of that one. In 2005, uh, President was Bill Clinton. And at that time, I received a number of complaints from Indian American small business groups. And, uh, and uh, they said, we are not getting enough contracts from the Department of Transportation. It so happens that I knew Norm Mineta, who was the Secretary of Transportation at that time. I said, let me go and check with him. I asked for an appointment two, three times. I didn't get one. And I ran into him in a, at a White House conference. And I said, Mr. Secretary, it has become so difficult to see you. Huh? I cannot get an appointment. I didn't even get a response. I am a blunt person, so I told them that one. He said, how can that be? I never received anything, any information about that. He took out his BlackBerry at that time. He didn't have the iPhone. And he said, are you available at 3 o'clock on Friday? Sir, you invite me at 3 p.m. or 3 a.m., I will be there. So <laughs> I went to see him. Mm. To put it in a nutshell, he said, look, Indian Americans are so successful. Your children go to the finest schools in the country. You are, you are uh, one, you know, uh, one of the most accomplished group of people. You are in the top one half of 1% group in the income level at the income earning income earning levels what do you, what else do you need sir i am not here to come and ask for supporting the top 25% of the indian americans i am here to come and ask you for the help for the bottom 25% of the indian american businesses who are at the lower end and i am representing them and i am bringing you a complaint from them and I want some resolution. And believe it or not, he said, he, his response was not very favorable at the time. And, and I said, thank you, Mr. Secretary, and I was about to leave. He asked me to sit down and said, you know, you make a good point. And then he, he established a category called 
Indian, Asian Indian category in the U.S. Department of Transportation under the heading uh, of OSDBU. Every federal government department has a department called OSDBU, Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Unit, and their prime job is to help minority businesses. And uh, so if you go to uh, the U.S. Department of Transportation and look at uh, the category in June of 2005, there is no Asian Indian category. But if you go in September and look at it, there is an Asian Indian category. I didn't publicize that one at the time because uh, the timing was not right and I thought it would bring conflict of interest. Uh, and I sacrificed my ego and <laughs> name for saying, who cares? Right. So long as the work is done. My father taught me something very good one. If you don't care who gets the credit for it, you can accomplish a lot more. And that's what we did. So I will repeat that. If you don't care who uh, gets the credit for it, you can accomplish a lot. We are trying to accomplish a lot, and I'll give whole credit to K.V. Kumar sir for coming up with such um, wonderful nuggets of, uh, full of wealth of knowledge. And brain, uh, of course, plays an important role, but brain injury uh, can cause havoc on uh, the normal functioning of anybody's life. And you have done uh, remarkable work in this field, which has helped many, many families who are affected by brain injury of one member of uh, their family? I'm a survivor of brain injury. Uh, in, uh, on October 2nd, Mahatma Gandhiji's birthday in uh, 1992, I had a head injury. I was invited by the Coca-Cola company to you know, go and visit with them. And one of the vice presidents picked me up while I was in the you know, Coca-Cola car, uh, Coca-Cola executive's car, uh, an unemployed truck driver hit us, put in a nutshell, the thing dragged on for 10 years. I went through various, uh, you know, phases of um, uh, rehabilitation. And, uh, but I did not sue the Coca-Cola company, nor the vice president, despite the fact when I was injured and when I was recovering, the gentleman who was driving the car was so gracious he hired, he recommended an attorney to sue him and the Coca-Cola, but we did not do that because it was not his fault. And sometimes, you know, the friendship and uh, the dignity goes far beyond money and other things. And I'm glad we didn't do that one. But the important thing that, that happened was, uh, because of that, uh, I suffered for 10 years. But I want to tell you, uh, quick uh, you know, thing that uh, when you help somebody, how it comes back to you. When you do something good for some cause, how it comes back to you. In 1992, earlier, before the accident, uh, 91 or 92, I'm not sure when she had. I had a call from Doro Bush, president's daughter. Jo George Herbert Walker Bush was the president at the time. His daughter called me. She said, KV, I would like to talk to you. Can we meet for lunch? So I invited her to the, the Jackie Club at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, which was on, at 21st and Massachusetts Avenue, which is in front of the embassy. I said, what can I do for you? She said, I am raising funds for the National Rehab Hospital. And could you please help me getting, if you can write a check, that's fine. And then in addition to that, I would like to have Indian Embassy host dinner for 50 people on such and such a date. I said, both are done. So I wrote a check for, you know, for the amount. And then I said, she said, look, you didn't ask the embassy. I said, look, Ambassador Abid Hussain will certainly oblige if I request him to do so. So long as he doesn't have a dinner on that day, okay? So she said, why don't you call? I called him, I had a cell phone, I called him. An ambassador was kind enough to take the call. And he said, uh, KV, I didn't tell him for whom, what, and I said, Mr. Ambassador, for a good cause, I want you to host dinner for 50 people on such and such a day. And he asked his assistant, and the date was available. He said, yes. But Doro Bush wanted confirmation. So I called the ambassador, I mean, uh, I'm back again. I said, Mr. Ambassador, I didn't tell you this is for President's daughter, 
who is raising funds for the hospital. She wants to talk to you. And she told him, we are sitting right in front of your embassy, uh, we're having lunch. Oh, so wow. ambassador walked over, he came, and, you know, and then he, you know, he talked. And little did I know at that time that I would go back to the same hospital for rehabilitation. Oh, man. Oh, man. And that hospital was so busy, doctors, we couldn't find apart appointments. But my wife must have called Dora Bush, and we got appointments. Okay? And, you know, the little good things you do, how it comes back in return, in multiplication. That's why I do a lot of volunteer work. I've done 138,000 hours of volunteer work mm -hmm. as of today. I think sitting with K.V. Kumarji tells you that here is an encyclopedia of, um, what should I say, selfless service, compassionate act, or someone who works with so much uh, sincerity and uh, genuine uh, approach uh, that he connects with many, many presidents, many governors, and of course, the president's daughter also called him. And so you have worked uh, closely with uh, President Bush, President Clinton, President Obama, uh, and of course, uh, President Trump. And, and, Trump and Ronald Trump. Reagan. Oh, Ronald Reagan, I missed that. Yeah. So first let us go, if any other um, personal interaction with any of the president that uh, you may want to share with us. <laughs> it was a funny thing that happened. You know, I was at the Ronald uh, Reagan's uh, event uh, and um, my boss was uh, Rick Renier. And Rick Renier was the military attache who used to carry the black box for the president. And he, you know, you cannot enter Ronald Reagan, President Reagan's private home in California with shoes on. The housekeeper would scream at you. I see. Anyway, uh, he had warned me on these things. And anyway, he what he, what he did was, he, um, Mrs. Reagan baked cookies and there were guests. So she gave it to uh, Rick and asked Rick to distribute the cookies. And he was upset, but he delivered it, and then he went away, back to his hotel room. President Reagan, where is Rick, where is Rick? He sent somebody to bring Rick back and uh, had lunch with him. And, but I want to go back to the brain injury. I just want to mention one thing. Please. One of the, at least, things that I have done which, which fills my heart is the passing of the 1996 Traumatic Brain Injury Act by U.S. Congress. I was one of the many people who worked, and I received the Millennium Award from the Brain Injury Association of America for that one. And, you know, it is a very rewarding thing. I was honored by the U.S. Senate, the California State Senate, and it helps five and a half million people. I served for a five to seven years, I don't remember exactly, on the you know, Board of Governors of International Brain Injury Association, as well as representative vice president for family affairs, survivor and family affairs. I served also uh, you know, two terms in the Governor's Council for Head Injury, and I served in uh, Brain Injury Association of Arizona. I did this voluntarily voluntarily and it is a very rewarding process we are actually um, being rewarded uh, by enriching ourselves in the presence of KU Kumar Sahib and uh, I also want to mention that uh, Brain Injury Association honored him uh, for his unheralded advocacy and then we also would like to mention that his name was included uh, among 250 who were featured in notable Asian Americans and he also uh, was one of the 100 uh, most influential multicultural business leaders uh, that was in 2009. Once again I remind you that I am uh, talking to K.V. Kumar Saab and uh, he is uh, he's wearing many hats at the same time and he is CEO of an important organization is one thing 
there are so many awards that has come his way. We mentioned about Alice Island Award and a few more. I'll just mention two more right now. And then I have a question for him related to um, one recognition. Um, so he was um, uh, awarded distinguished, uh, he was distinguished for advocacy to small business by U.S. Department of Commerce. Award for outreach efforts to the Indian American community on behalf of U.S. Department of Energy, Secretary U.S. DOE, that is Department of Energy. There is a lifetime of achievement for outstanding public service and of course with U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and all that. But I wanted to come here, uh, Kumar Sahib, and it uh, says an evening with K.V. Kumar hosted by Fisher and Phillips LLP and Asian Indian Chamber of GA. What was it uh, when we heard about um, an evening with Kishore Kumar, but when this was an evening with K.V. Kumar, how were you um, engaging <laughs> with the audience? Uh, you know, I was introduced by a U.S. senator who is a Democrat, Senator Max Cleland of Georgia. Very good friend of mine for a long time. I have known him when he was VA administrator under President Carter. That's when first I met with him. And then he became, you know, uh, Secretary of State of Georgia. He asked me to serve in his committee on small business, which I did. And then um, he became U.S. Senator. And I don't know some uh, local leaders. Uh, when I was in the McCain campaign, uh, they approached me and said, look, we want to you know, honor you in Georgia. That's how it came. An evening with K.V. Kumar. I don't know what the entertainment <laughs> part of it was. <laughs> Honestly, good food, good people. I truly enjoyed meeting with all of them. Yeah. And the managing partner of Fisher & Phelps, one of the largest law firms in the country, they hosted that one in their offices. It was a wonderful event. And, you know, to be introduced by a you know, U.S. senator, on, especially for a Republican to be introduced by a Democratic senator, was thrilling to me. <laughs> Kumar, and, though, we yeah. probably might be moving towards the concluding part of our conversation, but I want to learn for our viewers as well as for me and for anyone. Um, human relationship is the key for yes. growth. Uh, whether you talk about harmony uh, in the on the family front or you talk about business growth, how you connect with people. Uh, so what is it that has helped you um, have so many friends, so many relations? Because many times we <laughs> hear as we grow that they say you should not waste your time, which means you go by uh, finding out uh, what is there in it for me. There is one approach is like that. Another approach is you are just soulfully connecting with people for the joy of connecting with them. And you do your bit and that's about it. As you said that you contribute and then you move on. So share with me uh, and allow me to add, many times people are apprehensive that if he's a governor, how am I going to talk to him? I have this color of my skin and uh, so uh, you are fully comfortable in your skin and you have a sustained relationship with people who uh, who are in the position of power? First of all, I am very proud to be an Indian American. That India has given me an enormous amount of strength that no other country could have given me. And being an American, I'm an American first, Indian American second right now. And that's the way Prime Minister Modi wants and everybody wants. Ashok Sab, one of the things you mentioned is very interesting. How do, you know, what do I, what is it that friends like you, friends like Dr. Parikh, Dr., you know, a lot of my friends, my family, have supported me unconditionally. This doesn't come through, you know, overnight. I have suffered many times uh, with, at the lowest levels to the highest levels. I do not go up when I'm high, I do not go low when I'm down. I used to take 80 milligrams of Prozac for depression when I was after the accident. And 20 milligrams being the normal dosage. I used to take four times the normal dosage. And I was at times suicidal, that's what my family says. 
But you know what? When you get out of that one, when you put what you need to do ahead of that one, even little things. I have been fortunate. So many people have asked me to do some little things. And they are so appreciative of little things I do for them. That's such a blessing, sir. Such a blessing. When you are wanted by somebody, there is no greater demand than that in your life. Honestly, somebody, I answer my phones unless I'm in a meeting. If I cannot answer, I return their call. Not many times. Look, I had the fortune of knowing more than 110,000 people. Wow. At least on my Rolodex. Not that I keep up, keep up with everyone, I can't. Impossible. But, uh, but, uh, but you know what? People who have come into my life have made a big difference for me. It, in addition to my doing a little what they ask me for, of me, I have learned a lot from others. I learned a lot from everyone. I have learned a lot from you for having interviewed me, Ashokji. And so it is, it's a learning process in all our life. And when I die, if I can help somebody, I'll be happy. My organs are available. What can you say when you hear these words coming from K.V. Kumar Sahib? And I hope we will have more uh, opportunities to interact with him and probably go uh, to one aspect of um, his experience uh, in depth someday. But presently, as uh, he is uh, spearheading this organization, Indian American International Chamber of Commerce as chairman, executive board and CEO, and he has already helped many small entrepreneurs. So in what way? Anyone who is watching us, uh, if he is an entrepreneur or not, um, why should or uh, who are the people who should take interest in this organization? Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. We, we, we work with professionals, small business people. Uh, large businesses have their own way of doing things. They are also welcome to join us and they will, you know, because they are interested in doing things together. In fact, we have the opening ceremony of the Northeast Regional Office in New York on November 6th. And uh, Chairman of um, Federal Communications Commission has graciously agreed to inaugurate. And I just spoke with uh, uh, the Council General of India, okay, and uh, he, ha he was gracious enough to give us the accommodation at the, at the Council General's ballroom on November 6th. By, but this is by invitation only because of the space limitations. And if people are interested, they can contact either me or Appan Menon. We are on the website, uh, you know, uh, iaicc.world. And uh, we will try to accommodate people. And you are welcome to become member, contribute, and you know what? Together we can be the world of tomorrow. Together we can be the world of tomorrow and let us celebrate today. And uh, at this point, uh, when I uh, don't think I have uh, talked to someone with such variety of uh, experience and so much ups and downs and maintaining the optimum level of his spirit the way K.V. Kumar Sahib has done. And I. I, I thank you very much um, for giving us the opportunity to talk. Thank to you. you for uh, I, taking the time and uh, I appreciate your kindness and uh, questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I also appreciate once again his generosity in being open. And when someone like him shares, uh, it makes us look at our life with a different paradigm. And we also see so much light is filtering light which is full of hope, which is also uh, encouraging us to do more than what we have already done. So, our interview is done, <laughs> but such a pleasure, sir. Lots thank of you, thank you very much. Thank I appreciate much. it. And uh, thanks to all of you for being a part of this journey of learning about K.V. Kumar, sir. This is a show for us.